Hi guys and welcome back to FAQ Fridays. Now in today's video we are going to be discussing whether these guys need insects or whether a full fruit diet is actually better. Now I see this question popping up everywhere from people saying they don't want to have to look after feeder insects so they'll get a crested gecko to people actually criticising others for offering their gecko insects. Now in actual fact crested geckos in the wild do actually eat a variety of insects. Like others in the family such as chihuahuas or gargoyle geckos, the motion of the prey sparks their interest. They don't tend to travel too far for food, they are opportunistic, they tend to wait for the insects to come closer and then they will attack quite fast and sudden. They're also not always very precise, they can be quite clumsy hunters. All geckos of this family will eat insects, fruits, pollen and even small vertebrae. I especially find that geckos who have had an unbalanced diet, especially from hatchling to juvenile and then on to adults, tend not to grow very well. There's this idea that all geckos will need is this one powdered diet and they'll be good to go. Now saying this, I, I guess there are some geckos out there that have been raised from hatchling to adult and they have grown and they've only had one powdered diet and they've done fine. But I do feel like this is one major reason why we see a lot of crested geckos remaining as hatchling sizes even when they're adults. So in reality they do need to be offered a variety. Though I already knew this I wanted to go and do much more in-depth research on this subject and I came across this 229 page study of the Rachidaculus family and it's very interesting. It covers a lot of subjects but it is all in French, so it takes a while to read through because you have to go through section by section and translate it, but I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to check that out. Now these sorts of studies help to unveil what wild crested geckos eat, so what are captive crested geckos need? One study looked at the gut content of crested geckos in the wild and it consisted of a range of things such as berries, soft seeds, pollen, fruit juices, insects and if you look at this the insects alone actually take up nearly 50% of the contents and there was even remains of smaller lizards and remains of other vertebrae which took up another 20% combined so really we're looking at around 70% of the food consumed being other animals. So when we look at this and then we look what we're offering our own lizards, it is quite surprising how much they're missing out on. So what can we do about this? Well, I know that not every crested gecko is super enthusiastic about live food. Take Lyra for example, she really doesn't seem very interested in this cricket. When she first came to me, she was severely underweight and she'd go crazy for crickets. So I'm not sure whether this is something they are more enthusiastic about whilst they're growing and then they settle down a bit as adults, but it is something I'm working on and I hope to try a range of insects with her in the near future. There's a good website called Moon Valley Reptiles that have a range of information about feeder insects and what you can offer your geckos, so once again, I'll leave that link below. Now, other than offering live insects, there's a few diets out there now that contain real insects and are suitable for the whole family. Um, this includes Sticky Foot Gold by Arcadia, which I sometimes use for my Chihua. It contains 50% real insects and 50% real fruit. Lyra isn't totally sold on it, but we're working on it. And if you do use it, you do have to provide UV light because it is all natural. I believe Pangea also have a diet with insects in, but whilst looking at the ingredients, I couldn't really see clearly which insects they actually used in the diet. Another quick thing I'd like to touch upon is offering a variety in the way of powdered food too. So Lyra really, really loves watermelon and mango Pangea. However, I think it is important to offer other flavors to prevent your gecko getting bored and just in general, offering a variety. I've mentioned this many times in other videos before but I just want to stress once again that if you are looking to add variety and you go and get those jelly pots that you see in pet stores that are always recommended for crested geckos and things like that, please don't use them. They are just absolutely terrible. They have no benefit at all. If you were looking into adding a bit of variety in terms of jellies, I couldn't recommend the Arcadia range enough. 
Um, it's all natural, it's simple to make, and the geckos love it. So if you are interested, look up Jelly Pot Gold. As for real fruit, because I see this question all the time, <laughs> whether you can offer your gecko a piece of fruit. I have tried this in the past with blueberries, bananas, grapes, things like that, and it hasn't been too successful. Most of the time, the most a gecko will do is lick it. That's it, really. Um, so you can pop a bit in. They may lick it, they may be interested, but don't expect them to full on eat it. One last thing, if you are wondering where you can get pollen from to fulfill your gecko's pollen needs, I do know for sure that Arcadia's diets contain real pollen, and I don't mean to keep mentioning Arcadia, they haven't paid me to say anything or anything like that. Basically what it is, is I use their products a lot and I know quite a lot about their products, so I know I can recommend them to you and feel confident in doing so. Other diets I'm not as knowledgeable on, but I do know for sure they do use like real pollen, real honey, real fruits, real insects. But anyway, I hope that this has cleared things up. So next time you see someone say, nah, crested geckos don't need any kind of insects or even um, insects are really bad for crested geckos, just politely let them know there is significant evidence that suggests otherwise. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We are getting so close to 100,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. Can we get there before the end of the year? I'm not sure, hopefully. But anyway, and it also, if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon page as well because I'm blown away by that. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and goodbye.